So there is a lot to know about tripods, but I'm gonna try to condense it down into what I think are the most important things to think about when you're buying a tripod. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography, and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. Today we are talking all about tripods. This video has been a long time coming because I get a lot of questions about tripods. Now, like recommending a camera, there's not necessarily like one perfect camera for everybody. There's not one perfect tripod for everybody because really it's based on your needs and the things that are important to you and the work that you do. But before we dig into the details of tripods, I'm excited to share with you that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Now, I get messages all the time asking for help with things like, how do I get started in Photoshop? Or how do you edit videos in Premiere? Or things like, I like food photography, but I also wanna shoot portraits. Well, Skillshare has tons of quality classes just for you. One of my favorites is the DIY product photography with Daniel and Rachel of Mango Street. Now, their lessons include everything from planning the shoot to styling and lighting, tons of demos, and it's not just a head talking to a screen. And I love that it's applicable for both DSLR and phone shooters alike. So whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. And what's awesome is that the first thousand people to click the link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And then after that, it's only about $10 a month. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about tripods. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I think are just important to know and to consider and to be informed about when you're buying your first tripod. And I go back to when I bought my very first tripod. And admittedly, there was a lot that I did not know. I didn't really know what I was buying other than I knew I needed something to put my camera on, but I was just going based on what I saw other people doing. And fortunately, the selection I made was a good one. But one of the very first things that I found frustrating and had not realized when I bought my first tripod was that the tripod and the head are many times sold individually, that it's not just like one kit. Because I bought the tripod and I remember thinking, oh gosh, I've spent a lot of money on this and I'm super excited about this tripod and it shows up and I'm like, wait, how do I attach the camera <laughs> to the tripod? Super frustrating because I didn't realize I needed to buy the head, which was a separate part and piece, which actually cost the same amount as like the tripod itself. And I remember thinking, oh gosh, and I thought I already spent a lot of money. Here we go again. Now maybe you're thinking like I was at the time, like, well, why wouldn't they just like make it all one package together? Like, why do I have to buy these things individually? And it's actually for a really good reason. And that reason is the fact that the head is very specific to the kind of photographer and the kind of work that you do, that you're gonna want a particular head based on the way that you like to work and the needs that you have. Now, as far as heads go, there's tons of different kinds and styles out there, again, depending on what you need, but there's the three main categories that you'll most frequently see. You've got the pan and tilt head, you've got the ball head, and then we've got a geared head. So as far as the pan and tilt head, this was actually the very first tripod that I owned, which was super cheap, super flimsy. That thing only lasted me like six months until it was like... <laughs> trashed, but it has these little arms that you can adjust to adjust the different axis of the camera. So if you wanna move the camera horizontally, that you release the one arm and it loosens it up so that you can move it horizontally. Or then if you wanna move it vertically, then you loosen up another arm. And so you're kind of working the different axes based on these different arms. So then there's the ball head, which is my preferred style of tripod head, where you have a ball and it's inside this little housing, and then you have some sort of knob or some sort of way to tighten that ball into place. And then you can loosen the knob to move things around. This offers a lot of flexibility to kind of move on the fly and move quickly. Now, when I look at my little to-go travel tripod, which is really nice and compact, it just has this simple little knob, which I can release the ball and move the camera as I want. I can kind of tilt it on an angle. I can tilt it forward, backward, all sorts of directions. If I want to change the orientation of the camera, I can just slip it into this little piece here on the side. So this is great for, you know, just when I'm on the go, 
and I need something shotgun and simple and you know just need to be able to travel with it goes in this nice little pouch this though I would not recommend for most food photography this is going to be something that you're going to see a lot of backpackers or outdoorsy people certainly if you're out hiking a lot or having adventures this is a great little compact tripod as far as my preferred style of ball head is a pistol grip and the reason that I bought this this was kind of the very first like real tripod head I bought I saw another photographer using it and they let me play around with it I'm like oh my gosh this is so much easier because instead of having to like release a little gear or move things around you pretty much just grip that handle which releases the ball you reorient the camera and let go of it and it locks it in place to me this is the style of head that is going to give you the most flexibility so if you're the kind of shooter who likes to move around and reorient the camera and changes things quickly and does not have a lot of patience <laughs> this is going to be a great head for you now one of the things you do have to pay attention to and be careful with this head especially if you like to shoot in that vertical orientation which a lot of us do for the gram is you want to make sure that the plate that's attached to the bottom of the camera that attaches the camera to that head is firmly mounted because if you move into that vertical orientation the camera can start to slip a little bit so if you really want your shot locked in you don't want that camera moving around you just want to make sure that that plate is firmly affixed like really screw it firmly in there a lot of times I see folks who are like afraid to use their camera gear like oh I don't want to over tighten it like no tighten that thing get it firmly mounted like to the point that you can't take that off but one of the things that can be a drawback depending on the kind of work that you're doing to working with a ball head is that it is not a terribly precise method in terms of that tripod head whereas those folks who are architectural photographers product photographers 100% they're going to love a geared head now I've tried personally using a geared head before and I found it utterly frustrating because again no patience but people who have patience love these because you can make really refined adjustments and movements by turning each of the gears again kind of working on that axis concept that we can adjust the position of the camera and we can do it in a very measured way so I equate this to just like the idea of are you a cook or are you a baker because a baker is very precise, very calculated, precision is the key, whereas a cook is a little throw of this, a little bit of that, and that's much more what I am. So pistol grip is more of a cook, a geared head is much more of a baker. Now what I would recommend, because certainly these heads and these tripods in general, I do recommend going and spending some good money to get a quality one, because like I mentioned that very first one I had, it was trashed within just a couple of months whereas a good quality tripod will last you years and years but knowing that this is a significant investment then and not being necessarily sure if you'd prefer a ball head or if you'd be okay with a geared head or what's most important to you is check out your local camera store if you can go play with things in person and test it out that's just going to really help you in deciding what is going to serve you best but now maybe something I should have mentioned earlier in the video is like why is a tripod important why is this something that I emphasize so much and I know for me personally when I was shooting in natural light and I got my first tripod that really set me free because even if I was in a lower lighting situation so it was kind of darker in the space or I didn't have a lot of light coming through the window because it was the end of the day or it was super cloudy or whatever is that we can really utilize those slower shutter speeds in order to balance our exposure instead of dipping into our ISO so for me that was just like my blowing and really like game changing but then too you know I know there's plenty of folks out there who love to be a freehand shooter that you feel like that really helps you to connect with the scene and get some really interesting perspectives on the scene and sort of explore it but one of the things that I did find so enjoyable when I moved to working on a tripod was being able to compose based on knowing where the frame was that instead of setting up the scene and then finding the framing is that setting the framing ahead of time and then composing the scene by utilizing tethering with a live view mode that this really just helps to create an intentional composition and I know that that became a lot of fun for me as well but now to back backtrack just a little bit to something I mentioned kind of glossed over and maybe we're thinking whoa 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 Let, let's stop and let's talk more about this what is a quick release plate well this is what enables us to be able to attach the camera to the tripod head quickly because way way back in the day you'd have to you know manually screw the camera onto the tripod and then take it back off and it was this very labor intensive process clearly would have not worked for somebody like me no patience but fortunately they've innovated 
started with the idea of the quick release plate, which you attach this little plate, it screws into the bottom of your camera, and then you can quickly just slide it into this little part of the head, clicks into place, and you're rocking and rolling. And then when you're ready to go off the tripod, you just pull the little trigger and releases and quick release, you're off and running. But now one of the things to watch out for that some folks get a little frustrated when they make future purchases, like you buy your first tripod and you love it, but then maybe you wanna add a travel tripod at some point, or you need a monopod in order to be able to mount the camera to some sort of other stand or something like that, is understanding the fact that those plates can be proprietary based on brand. There are certain ones that are universal and can be used between different brands, but there are certain ones, for example, the Manfrotto that I have, it's to be used with the Manfrotto head. So that quick release plate only works with Manfrotto heads. That if all of a sudden I popped a Vanguard plate on the bottom of that camera, it would not fit in my Manfrotto heads. So just something to think about in terms of your future purchases to know that you wanna keep those plates consistent. All right, so then the next thing, the kind of really important thing to think about and to make a decision about, and again, I am not here to tell anybody what they should do or what's gonna be most important to you, but the thing you gotta think about is how high your tripod goes and how high you need it to go. So we don't necessarily need super high tripods in the food photography realm because most of our projects, most of our photos are happening at tabletop height. So a tripod that goes up to 65 inches in general will be a tall enough one to do most tabletop photography. But where things get tricky and what you gotta really think about in terms of the height of your tripod and the kind of work that you do and the setup and where you're shooting and what's important to you is the idea of being able to take the camera overhead and shoot from the overhead perspective, that top-down flat lay perspective. So there are plenty of tripods out there like my M055 that have the ability for an articulating arm that the central column comes up, that you can reorient it and have it then go overhead so that you're shooting top-down. And I remember when I bought this tripod thinking, oh, it's great, I can do this for all my overhead shots, but I ran into some troubles. Now this works great for some folks, but there's kind of three things to me that are problematic about this. The first one being that it's terribly unstable. Like that your camera can just go toppling over unless you have a super lightweight, small camera. But the second you start getting into serious lenses or other things like that, like a oh, little puppy's just gonna dive on over. So you're gonna need some sort of counterweight. You do have the ability that underneath it, you can attach, you know, a weight or a sandbag or your camera bag or what have you to kind of cause that counterweight, but it is definitely kind of an unstable sort of setup. But even more so than that, I found a lot of times that I had a hard time composing this scene that if I wanted that like wider overhead table shot, that the legs would be visible in the scene, that I couldn't get the orientation of everything put together in such a way that I would have the freedom of the wide perspective that I wanted in terms of that angle of view without getting the legs in it. The other thing too being that if I wanted to work on a tabletop, that I'd have to work on a big enough table for the legs to fit. Like my two by three backdrops that I usually work with aren't wide enough in order to accommodate the legs of the tripod. So that became complicated too. And then you're shooting on the floor and I'm too old to be shooting on the floor. Maybe 10 years ago, okay, but not now. I'm too old for that. So we work at tabletop height. So then that's when you start to think about, okay, maybe I need a tripod that can go really, really high and I can add a lateral arm to it, which a ton of food photographers do. That you get all that height that you need and also some added stability because usually a lot of times those tripods that can go higher are gonna have just more physical weight to them. I'm not saying though that you shouldn't also then in those situations consider some sort of counterweight or some sort of sandbag to help anchor that. Again, we don't wanna see our beautiful cameras go flying to the ground because we don't have a stable tripod set up. But so then as a segue kind of into this topic of stability, that stability is paramount. When it comes to buying a tripod, we wanna make sure that that tripod is going to be very stable underneath whatever camera and lenses that we're using. Because I know for me, whatever is going to be holding my camera for me, if I'm not holding it, I wanna make sure whatever is, is gonna be strong enough to do so. And so when you look at the specs of both the tripod as well as the head, you wanna pay attention to the payload. The idea of what is the maximum recommended weight for that setup to be stable. And there's gonna be a separate payload for the tripod and a separate one for the head, whichever one is lower is going to be the total payload that you can load up that combination together. Say for example, we have a 20 pound payload on the tripod and then we have a 12 pound on the head. 
Well, the total payload of that whole setup used in conjunction together is gonna to be whichever one's less. So the 12 pounds, that's the most that we can put on that setup before it starts to become unstable. Now, if you put like, say for example, that 12 pound head, you put something that's 13 pounds on it, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna fall apart, but you're starting to go to that place where it's gonna become unstable. And stability is also super important from the standpoint of if we're shooting with slower shutter speeds, which sometimes in natural light, that's happening for us, that if we have an unstable tripod, that's gonna turn into camera shake. So we wanna really minimize that in addition to keeping our camera safe. But so then you're looking at these payloads of these different tripods and these heads and you go, well, what do I actually need? Well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is think about what is your heaviest camera and your heaviest lens and how much are those two things together and is that going to exceed the payload of the head or the tripod base that you're using. So for example, I have the Manfrotto 055 aluminum tripod, which is a maximum payload of 20 pounds. And then I have that pistol grip ball head, which has a maximum payload of 12 pounds. So we consider both of those used together. Then the total payload should not exceed 12 pounds. So then you're like, okay, well, let's think about then what is my heaviest camera and my heaviest lens that if I use those two things together, will that exceed that 12 pound maximum payload? So if you hop online, whether that be Amazon a lot of times or the camera retailer or you know some sort of manufacturer, you can find the actual weight of the items. So looking up the Canon 5D Mark IV, which is my heaviest camera and the 24 to 70 millimeter F 2.8 lens, heaviest lens, when I use those two things together, that comes out to 3.74 pounds. But now what was funny to me is I also was like, well, let's check on the Nikon, the Z7, because you know in theory, that's gonna be a lighter weight camera, it's mirrorless. It's got a pretty beefy lens on it. But what was funny is they listed all of those specs, at least for the mirrorless cameras and ounces. You know, I, sometimes I think like, are they trying to make it seem like it weighs less? Because ultimately it's only a couple ounces less in comparison to the 5D Mark IV, but whatever. Either way, my biggest camera with my biggest lens used together is significantly less than the payload of that tripod head. So I know I'm good to go. I'm not gonna have a problem. So before you hit that purchase button, Button, just double check, make sure that what you're buying is going to be strong enough to support the camera and the lenses that you have or your future camera and lens purchases. Now, one super nifty thing that I had not noticed, I don't know why, again, I am not necessarily the most observant person, <laughs> but one thing that somebody pointed out to me and I was like, oh my gosh, that's really helpful, is that there is actually a little level in a lot of, most tripods. I don't think I've owned a tripod that doesn't have one. So that we can ensure that once we've got that tripod position, that it's perfectly level, super helpful. And now circling back around to the idea of stability, that certainly making a purchase of a tripod that is going to be properly stable for the work that you're doing is super important. But then once we get that tripod, whenever possible, setting it up in a way that is going to maximize the stability. So of course we talked about sandbags and counterweights, things like that, but then in a additional measure that you can take is there's going to be plenty of times when you don't need the tripod fully extended, right? You don't necessarily need the legs fully extended and then that center column fully raised that whenever possible is don't rely on the central column for your height, rely on the legs for that. Because when we can, it's nice to keep the camera at kind of that lower center of gravity toward the chassis so that it just creates more stability. This is especially gonna be helpful if you're again shooting with those slower shutter speeds, that if that center column starts to raise, that that can just kind of add some additional instability to the whole setup. Again, not that we're gonna necessarily worry about the camera toppling over, but just to avoid that camera shift. That's just a little something that I personally try to do, although sometimes it's just like so much easier just to <laughs> raise the center column, take the shot and go on with life. Now, in case you're curious about the specific tripods and heads and everything that I own, you are welcome to go check those out. I've got my gear page linked down in the description box below. But like I've said a million times, and I'll say it a million more, is that just because something works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So I'm hoping you'll take all these lessons that I shared with you here today and apply that and think through what's going 
going to work for you. You know, and in terms of brand, I do own Manfrotto and I've loved Manfrotto. I mean, that 055 has been through heck and back with me. It has been through the ringer, continual use, like nonstop for the last, oh gosh, at this point, six or seven years since I've owned that puppy. And it's still going strong. I love that thing. But there's also other great brands out there. Gitzo, really right stuff. Vanguard, I've also heard good things about being something that's a little less expensive, but still also, you know, gonna be quality. But like I said, and I cannot emphasize this enough, get something that's going to be quality. Don't do what I did when I bought my very, very first tripod, that crappy one that I had to replace six months later. It's like throwing your money away. Get something that's quality so that it's going to last you for years in the future. But I think that's it. I think we covered most of the major bases. I do have some additional resources. Like if you want to go even further down the rabbit hole and get even nerdier on tripods, I've got some helpful articles linked below. But with that, I hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.